Hey everybody, what's up? Uh, it is the start of 31 and 31, and we are focusing this time on foreign horror. So the, the reason why I chose foreign horror, and it's mostly, you know, non-English speaking horror movies, but it's going to include some movies that are not produced here in the United States to me. So, you know, and it's one of those things where these are movies that I really want to talk about that are outside the realm that I can do my normal podcast for. Yeah, maybe I kind of pigeonhole myself in the way that I do my podcast, not just talk about horror movies in general and focus on the audio directly from the movies and stuff like that. You know, that that can be, you know, put, pigeonhole me into a little corner or something like that. But I think that the, the way that I do it, I, I enjoy it, right? That's basically what it comes down to. And so these are all going to be films that are going to be focused on non-English speaking films. And we're just going to do short little reviews, you know, maybe max five minutes for, for all of these. And I've already wasted some time with this one. Uh, but let's first talk about the very first movie, which is Pulse by Kiyoshi Kurosawa. Uh, I loved this movie the very first time I saw it. And I saw this in college, and this was quite a while ago. And honestly, like looking back on it, some stuff in this movie is dated when you look at it because... It's like the birth of the internet becoming like this widespread thing. But the the way that it's crafted and the way that it, it, the background stories it tells are really, really good. And it still holds up to me. Uh, and maybe it's because I also put that, you know, nostalgia factor back on this movie. And it's been literally 20 years since I've seen this movie. Uh, and, you know, when I first saw it, I saw it like two or three times because I really wanted to get in... in grossed in it and I took a class on uh, Japanese literature and to supplement the Japanese literature the professor at the time uh, he decided to show us films as well because he felt that like films are a piece of literature and you know Japanese culture which I, I really enjoyed and I think it really helped a lot in understanding the the works that we were seeing on you know uh, on the screen as well as what we were reading at the same time. So what is the basic plot of Cairo or Pulse? Uh, it's it's difficult to say. There's like two concurrent stories that are going on at the same time. And basically, uh, they're both kind of involving the same thing, but one person or persons are actually actively going through the process, while the other ones, it's stemming from something else. And basically, you know, you get a message on your screen of your computer when you connect to the internet, and it comes from a ghost and it's like, would you like to meet a ghost? And then it has you construct this room where the ghost then shows up in. And then slowly but surely, you it's kind of like you go mad, I'd say in a sense. And then you end up killing yourself do the horrors that you see and the ghosts that have now invaded the world. And it all stems from the internet. And so you have one pair, you know, this, the, these two like grad students, it might even be one grad student, one college, I don't know, but they're both, you know, at the university and they're like, one guy is, is getting the messages and this girl is trying to help him. And I'm not even going to try to say names of characters because one, I probably forgot and two, uh, I don't want to fuck anything up. Uh, but basically she's trying to help him understand it. And then, like, she gets sucked into the whole world of the ghosts and building the room and all that stuff. And then the other one is dealing with these people that work at this plant company. And one of them, in the beginning of the movie, he kills himself after he's done the whole process. And then they kind of get involved. There's another co-worker of hers that goes back to the apartment trying to find something. Then he gets sucked into the whole thing. He actually goes into one of the forbidden rooms that are all covered by red tape. But... The, I think the key point in this movie is where, and it's always freaked me out when, whenever we do this stuff, is that there's this thing a grad student has designed, and it's all these people, right? It's all these dots, and they kind of move all over the place. And the when the dots get closer, they move apart, and then they disappear. And it's a lot of it is designed around, and I'm sorry, I keep looking over there, but it's me just remembering and thinking, um, the fact that you know, the, the closer that we become, the further we move apart, the closer communication becomes, the further we move apart. And a lot of it has to do with the way the internet is set up. And this is so early in the years of the internet 
that it's like right at the beginning that we're slowly starting to use it more for communication between people rather than just data information, right? So you can put a lot of it in if you reflect upon nowadays, I think social media would be that thing that even though it says that we're connecting and one of the characters even does, it says, well, it says we're gonna connect together, but people really don't. They don't connect at all. And that's kind of the way I can kind of like transpose it upon it. You know, the more that we feel that we're closer to each other, we're actually a lot further apart when it comes to the internet and when it comes to actually working with people. You don't talk to people as much. You kind of hide away in your own little corner. Even though you think you're talking to other people that are out there, you know, eventually maybe they're gonna forget about you. You know, it could be not necessarily say like your family or anything like that, but the people that you meet online, because eventually you're gonna go away, they're never gonna notice, and that's going to be it. That's, that's kind of one of the things. And, and of course there's the ghost story with the ghosts actually invading the world and killing people off and, and making more ghosts, and then they make more ghosts and they make more ghosts. Now, again, it's a little disjointed because it's very slow burn. The first like 30 minutes are genuinely fucking creepy. It's great. And the way that it's shot, honestly, there's a, he does such a good job with tension in this movie. And it's so much fun to watch. Uh, but it does slow down a little bit in the middle. And then it picks up towards the end of the movie, especially when you start seeing more of the ghosts. Um, there's the really creepy scene with the, the girl, the friend that um, is like, he's he started to get the message like story two or plot line two, where she finally meets the ghost and she sees him in the center and she holds on to him for a second. Like that that scene is so well done. Even the, the scene where uh, the coworker goes back into the apartment and he sees the guy that killed himself. And then all of a sudden he's like, it's like a black stain on the wall. And then you see him and then it's another black stain. And he starts creeping out, goes into the red room and the girl's in the corner of the girl ghost and like starts like doing this weird, like walky, creepy dance. It's really cool. I really enjoy those moments in this movie. So uh, I give it a, a, a solid four out of five Forbidden Rooms. Like this, this is a movie, if you haven't seen it before, make sure that you spend your time right now at the time of this recording. It's one of the reasons why I watched it. It's available on Amazon Prime. It's worth your time to me. Uh, I still love this movie a lot and definitely check it out. So, you know, we're gonna continue on. Hopefully we get all 31 of these done, done on time. Uh, and uh, up for everybody to enjoy. So if you guys really like the series, and it's the beginning of it, so suggestions, I always like to take them and make sure that you uh, give me a subscription, you know, like, follow, whatever you want to do, ring that bell, do all that fun stuff, and look forward to more of these 31 in 31 horror films.